Welcome to Broadway Church Online. We're so glad you've joined us today. My name is Victor, and you have joined us on week seven of our sermon series entitled Invitations from God. In just a few moments, Pastor Nathan will share a great message with us. But before we continue, I would love for you to hit the like button on this video as it helps spread what God is doing here at Broadway Church. And if you have not yet subscribed to our channel, please do so right now. Today is also Celebrate Sunday. And as a church, we celebrate communion and baptism. So now is the time to gather your elements, some crackers, some juice, or some liquid. And immediately after the sermon, one of our pastors will lead us in a time of communion. Now, in just a few moments, the worship team is going to come out and lead us in a few songs. But before that happens, why don't you check out these videos? Life moves fast, doesn't it? Every day, there is so much to fit in. But do you ever stop and think? What's the point of it all? Do you ever ask yourself, is there more to life than this? Alpha is a series of sessions exploring life, faith and meaning. It's a space to explore the big questions, to say what you think and hear other people's points of view. First up, there's food, then a talk, followed by a discussion. Each talk explores a different aspect of the Christian faith. And then in the small group, you get to say exactly what you think. The aim of the talk is to spark conversation, each week unpacking a different question. There's no obligation to say anything, and there's nothing you can't say. Seriously. It's an opportunity to hear from others and contribute your own perspective in an honest, friendly and open environment. Why not try it out? Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Desiree and I am one of the leaders here. And today we have a very special guest with us, someone who is on spring break, one of our preteens. So why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. My name's Olive. Okay, Olive, thank you for being here. And I'm really excited that you're here because I thought today we could set the record straight officially because every single week we talk about who is taller, which is obviously me. No, it's me. Okay, well, let's, let's see. <laughs> let's let the people decide. Okay, uh, Victor, come and come and set the record straight. <laughs> mm, definitely Olive. Yeah. Okay, well I guess we set the record straight. Uh, <laughs> hmm. Well, we have a ton of stuff happening here, Broadway, for you and your families. So let's get into it. City Reach is hiring for two full-time positions. Would you or someone you know be interested to join us as a Food for Families truck driver or as the fundraising and volunteer coordinator? We're looking for qualified and enthusiastic individuals to join our team now. For more info, visit cityreach.org slash job opportunities. Next Sunday night at 6 p.m., we will be starting up our monthly encounter nights. An encounter night is an evening of worship, prayer, and interaction with the Holy Spirit. This is an all-church event, so please join us on April 3rd at the Vancouver campus. For more information, contact lewisc at broadwaychurch.com. Beginning on March 30th, we are offering the Emotionally Healthy Relationship course at our Vancouver campus in room 105 on Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. Come and learn eight skills that will transform the way you love God, yourself, and others. For details, contact Pastor Mick Nelson here at the church. You are invited to a free online class for parents and caregivers entitled Supporting Kids Mental Health, Strategies for Parents and Caregivers, featuring special guest David Miner, social worker, counselor, and coach. It's all happening online Tuesday, April 5th at 8 p.m. Sign up to get the Zoom link at broadwaykids.ca or email Pastor Emily for more details. 
Do you have questions about life, purpose, and faith? Join Alpha. Alpha is a 10-week interactive series where we explore the most important questions about life, purpose, and faith. There will be an online and on-site option for Alpha, and it begins on March 30th at 6.30 p.m. Find all the details at bway.ca slash alpha. Come worship with us on Good Friday at our Vancouver campus as we reflect on the cross and the sacrifice of our Savior Jesus, happening on Friday, April 15th at 11.15 a.m. Also, He is risen. He is risen indeed. Come celebrate Easter on April 17th at all campuses at our regular service times. Are you grieving the loss of a loved one? Or do you know someone who's recently been bereaved? We are offering a half-day seminar to support you on this journey. We will have video presentations and an opportunity to share in a safe environment. Happening on Saturday, April 9th from 9 a.m. to noon in the Hornby Chapel. For more information, contact Pastor Sheila Thompson. If you missed anything that we said, you can always visit our website, broadwaychurch.com, for more information on all of our ministries and events. And while you're there, make sure to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Well, welcome to Broadway, everyone. It's so great to see you. Why don't you stand as we sing a couple songs together to worship our God.
prospered, He brought me into His love for me. Oh, His love for me. Who the sun sets free, oh, is free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I He has ransomed His grace. 
thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I heard a tender whisper aloud in the dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleasing that I never Father, it's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you, it's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am, and I've seen many searching for it. surround me with a song 
of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God I'm no
For some of us here today, um, we have to we have to mimic those words of the psalmist. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. For some of us here, we've had pretty tough weeks, and we have to command our souls to praise the Lord. Soul, you might not feel like it right now. Soul, you might have had a tough week, but praise the Lord. For some of us, it's just right there at the surface. It's bubbling over, and we just couldn't wait to get to church this morning so we could sing it out. And others, uh, others of us have had to reach deep to grab, gather that praise, to bring it forth to the Holy One. So regardless of where you are today, whether it was tough work, commanding our souls to praise the Lord, or if it's right there at the surface, just bubbling over our affection and our gratitude for our Savior, wherever you are today, know that our God reigns that he has you firmly in the palm of his hand he is sitting on his throne and he knows exactly what he's doing amen, amen. pray with me church heavenly father today we come before you from all different walks of life we come before you from all different feelings and stages but right now father we we humble ourselves we surrender everything to you and we simply want to bless you god we simply bless you Bless the Lord, oh my soul. God, you reign in heaven. You reign here on earth. You reign in this church. And God, this city belongs to you. So Lord, we, we surrender. We give you our all. And Father, in humility, we simply say, we give you our very best right here and right now. So take us. Remind us of your grace. Remind us of your love and your overwhelming mercy in our lives. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you. And everyone said together, amen, amen, amen. Welcome to Broadway Church, and thank you, worship team, for leading us in worship today. You've joined us on what we like to call Celebrate Sunday, and today we celebrate communion and baptism. If you have made the decision to follow Jesus and are considering taking that next step to be baptized in water, Please visit bway.ca slash baptism for all the information you need. Don't forget to get your elements ready as one of our pastors will lead us in communion after the sermon. We are now going to transition into our time of giving. If you are new to Broadway Church, please feel under no obligation to give. You do not have to pay to watch or attend church. However, if you would like to financially support what God is doing here at Broadway, we would love for you to do that now. Our preferred way of giving is for you to go to the Give tab on our website and check out the online banking giving option. We can accept your credit card over the phone if you call the church office. You can come in in person from 9 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. during the week if you want to drop it off. Or you can use text to give If you text the word GIVE to the number on the screen, it'll walk you through the prompts to get set up. Or finally, you can mail checks to the church. We would like to encourage you to take some time after today's sermon to discuss what stood out or spoke to you the most, perhaps with some friends or family members. We also want to help you by providing some discussion questions immediately after the sermon, so please stay tuned. Once again, Pastor Nathan will share a great message with us in just a moment, but you still have time to hit the like button on this video as it really does help reach many more people and share the good news of Jesus. Thank you once again for joining us today. It started with creation, the first words, let there be light. The fall separated us from him, relationships broken, families torn apart, but it did not have the final word. Goliath mocked God's people taunting Israel with his cries of defiance. But he did not have the final word. The kings denied him, punishing those who faithfully followed the Lord. But they did not have the final word. Jonah rejected him, running from his calling. But he did not have the final word. 
The disciples betrayed him, each one leaving him when he needed them most. The cross humiliated him, bruises on his body, thorns in his brow, nails in his feet. But it did not have the final word. The grave held him, but only for three days. Jesus, he has the final word. So now, Adele, here's what we're doing as a congregation. We uh, have purchased several of the books, and we offer them for sale at all of our campuses, and we encourage people to read them, or they can purchase them themselves online. But what we were doing is we're uh, in the Bible class, uh, the, the, the week after a sermon is taught, the following week in the Bible class is uh, 45 minutes devoted to unpacking the previous week's material from the book. That's how we're trying to get people to interact with the material. How do you think a person can best interact with the material from this book? What would you recommend someone do who wants to get the most out of the series in this book? So when we did it as a sermon series, um, we had small groups doing just exactly what you're doing. Because one of the things that uh, I know about saying yes to an invitation is that it's hard to say yes alone. So if I'm saying I'm saying yes to the invitation to rest uh, or and practice Sabbath, let's just lump those together. Um, if I'm saying yes to that, it can be really hard to do that alone if everybody I know is, you know, super busy on Sunday and um, one, I remember one of the women in one of the groups was, came up to me after we, after the week of doing rest and, you know, how are you, how, what rhythms are you going to change it? She was so excited. She said, I know some people are giving up all their, uh, technologies on Sunday, but I gave up two hours on my cell phone and that was huge. And I'm so grateful just for that two hours, just to know I wasn't going to look. So, you know, people start where they are. But I want to say any of these invitations require practice. And it's a practice, not perfect. You right. know? Yes. Well said. Well said. Well, thank you, Adele, for taking the time to allow me to interact with you. And uh, I just want to remind the people at Broadway Church, it's not too late to uh, pick up a book. Adele, I want to thank you for taking the time to invest into the writing of this book. And thank you for the, taking the time to invest in the people at Broadway Church. God bless you. I want to take you back to the summer of 2020. Now, COVID had just started and we all thought that we would be out of this mess within a few months. Stores were shut down, workplaces went online and grocery store lines wrapped around the sides of buildings. And of course, gyms had shut down. Now, I didn't realize how much I relied on the gym for my physical health until I couldn't go anymore. Now, I'll spare you the details, but let's just say being stuck at home where no one could see me was probably for the best. I remember thinking, God forbid this pandemic go on for another two months. I can't keep going on like this. I need to get in shape. So I scoured every store to buy some weights so I could work out at home. I couldn't find anything. I scoured Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist and everything had been marked up over 50% and I was getting desperate. All of a sudden, a glimmer of hope came. I came across an ad that seemed to be an, a salvation for me. $100 for a set of 10 dumbbells, ranging from 10 pounds to 50 pounds, and it came with a storage rack. Best part, I had free shipping. Now, some of you who know how much weights cost are thinking, Nathan, you are so stupid, and you'd be right, but hey, it had free shipping, and I was desperate. So I quickly put in my credit card information, and I waited for a confirmation email. Nothing. I thought that was weird, but I decided to wait a little longer because the website said they ship within a couple of days. I waited and I waited. I was so excited to get some new weights and start pumping that iron, start getting shredded. But suddenly waiting for when it was gonna arrive turned into waiting for 
if it was going to arrive. Now, if you're wondering, no, I never did receive my dumbbells, but you never know, maybe one day it will show up on my doorstep. I am still waiting expectantly. But let's be real, waiting is never fun. And unlucky for us, life is full of waiting. We wait for our Amazon package to arrive. We wait at the line at McDonald's. We wait to see the new season of Love is Blind come to Netflix. We wait at the doctor's office, the dentist's office, the therapist's office, the chiropractor. We wait for our Bitcoin investment to rise. We wait for our spouse to get ready so we can leave. We wait in traffic. We wait for the work day to end. We wait for the Wi-Fi to stop bugging out. We wait for our timber coffee to cool down. Waiting is not fun. And unfortunately, life is full of it which is why our society has done everything in its ability to cut down on the amount of time that we have to spend waiting. Now, I know some of you think I'm so young, but believe it or not, I do remember using a VHS player. I remember having to sit there and wait as a VHS rewinded every time you wanted to play it. I also remember how you had to wait for your show to come on TV instead of binging a whole season on Disney+. Plus. I remember having to wait through commercials. I remember having to bid on an item on eBay and having to wait to see if you got it. And then I remember having to wait for that package to arrive, sometimes taking up to two months. I even remember having to wait for dial-up internet to connect. Well, now we have high-speed internet, Amazon same-day delivery, Netflix, Disney+, Plus, Prime Video, Uber Eats, e-transfers, and the list goes on. And every day, we're finding newer and newer ways to not have to wait. Efficiency and productivity is the name of the game, and I think this is why I can speak for most of us when I say in the moments where I do have to wait, it drives me crazy. One of the biggest pet peeves I have is walking behind slow people because I have to wait for you to move out of the way. I can't even wait for my pizza pop to cool down. Patience is not something that our culture has a lot of. And maybe you're here today and you're in a season of waiting. You're not waiting for your junior chicken at McDonald's, you're waiting for something bigger. Maybe you're waiting for a husband or a wife. Maybe you're waiting for a career or a job. Maybe you're waiting for God to give you kids. Maybe you're waiting to hear back from that college. Or maybe you're waiting to finish college. Maybe you're waiting for a healing. Maybe you're waiting for your finances to turn around. You're waiting for a, a child to return to the Lord. Or maybe you're just waiting for this pandemic to end. And for many of us, we're just waiting for a break. Whatever it is, if you're here today and you're waiting, Today's message is for you. Believe it or not, waiting is actually an invitation from God. We're in a series here at Broadway Church called Invitations from God, and we're looking at all the things that God invites us into. And today, we're going to be looking at God's invitation to wait. Now, I know that might sound like more of a punishment than an invitation, but trust me, it's not a punishment. Waiting can actually be a blessing. And if you'll stick with me to the end, I'll show you how and why. Now, we're all invited to wait, but today I want to look at a couple in the Bible who waited longer than most of us ever will have to for God's promises in their life. This couple's name is Abraham and Sarah. So let's take a trip back to the 1900s BCE. Yep, BC. This is 2,000 years before Jesus lived, long before Amazon Prime or Uber Eats or even the Canada Post. God chose Abraham to be the father of a nation whose descendants will become what we know now as the Israelites. And through his line, a blessing would come for the whole world. Let's read what it says in Genesis. The Lord had said to Abram, whose name was later changed to Abraham, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I'll make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I'll make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I'll bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all the peoples on the earth will be blessed through you. Now, we now know that this blessing that was coming was Jesus, who was a direct descendant of Abraham, and it was through his death and resurrection that we have the forgiveness for our sins, which if you've never made a decision before to accept that gift of forgiveness, I'm going to give you an opportunity to do that before our time is up. So imagine you're Abraham. That sounds like a pretty sweet deal, right? The only problem was that Sarah, who was Abraham's wife, was barren. She couldn't have any children, and Abraham was getting old. Both of their time to have kids was running out, and yet, God promised it. I mean, if anyone could do the impossible, it's God, right? It was now just a matter of waiting for it. It was all in God's hands. There was nothing that Abraham or Sarah could do to hurry it along, force it to happen, or speed it up. They were totally and completely dependent upon God and his timing. And I don't know about you, but that's not a fun place to be. 
Do you feel like Abraham and Sarah right now? Do you feel like you're sitting there twiddling your thumbs, waiting for God to move, waiting for God to act, waiting for God to come through? Why is it so hard for us to wait? Now, if you're the type of person who doesn't even like waiting five minutes for their double Baconator from Wendy's, let me drop some truth on you that will haunt your nightmares. Abraham and Sarah had to wait 25 years for their first son to be born. 25 years. I don't know about you, but I'd start to doubt God's promise after the first six months. But 25 years, I mean, that's torture. But if you think that Abraham and Sarah sat there patiently, trusting in God's promise that whole time, you'd be wrong. Like many of us, they distrusted God's plans and timing. And instead of trusting that God would follow through on his promise, they took matters into their own hands. It says this, Now Sarai, Abraham's wife, had borne him no children, but she had an Egyptian slave named Hagar. So she said to Abraham, The Lord has kept me from having children. Go, sleep with my slave. Perhaps I can build a family through her. Abraham agreed to what Sarai said. So after Abraham had been living in Canaan for 10 years, Sarai, his wife, took her Egyptian slave Hagar and gave her to her husband to be his wife. He slept with Hagar and she conceived. Did you see what just happened? God had promised Abraham and Sarah that he would give them a son, but they both didn't want to wait for God's promise. They started to doubt that God's plan and timing was best. And instead of trusting God's promise, Abraham and Sarah decided to take matters into their own hands. And to be honest, I can't help but to relate. I mean, think about it. God, I've been waiting for so long. Are you still even there? When waiting for God, we often take matters into our own hands. We, we force it to happen, just like Abraham and Sarah did. Listen, God's plan and promise was for Abraham and Sarah, not Abraham and Hagar. Now, God still took care of that son that was from Hagar, but it was not the son that God was going to give Abraham, that his blessing would come through. Instead of waiting on God, they took control of the situation. And I think this exposes one of the biggest reasons that we have such a problem with waiting. If you're taking notes, write this down. Waiting exposes our need for control. It exposes our need for control. When we wait, it exposes our doubts and expectations about what God should do. And Abraham and Sarah went from waiting for when God would come through on his promise to waiting for if God would come through on his promise. And it exposed that they didn't fully trust God with their future. You see, waiting requires a relinquishment of control. It requires us saying, I don't know when this is going to happen. I don't even know if this is going to happen. But I'm going to lay down my expectations and trust in God's plan for me. Abraham and Sarah expected that God would give them a son in their timing rather than in his. And when God didn't fold to their wants, their insecurities and their need for control bubbled up to the surface and it exposed that they didn't really want God's plan. They wanted their plan. Now, like I said, I can't help but to relate. I mean, we all have expectations about what God will do and how our life will go. We have expectations about where we'll work. We have expectations about who we'll marry. We have expectations about where we'll live. We have expectations about how our family will act. But trusting in God and waiting means laying aside our expectations in favor of God's timing. Are you expecting God to come through in a specific way? Are you expecting your life to look a certain way? The Bible says in Proverbs, many are the plans in the mind of a man, but it's the purpose of the Lord that will stand. Any marriage counselor can tell you that one of the biggest contributors to conflict in a, in a relationship is unmet expectations. We expect that the other person is going to act a certain way, and when they don't, it leads to disappointment and resentment. And we can act the same way with God. When God doesn't come through in the way we want or at the time we expect, we start panicking. We go into an internal state of emergency, we worry, we can't sleep, we get angry, we cry, we plead, binge, obsess, anything to numb the pain and frustration of waiting. Now, if you can relate to that, welcome to the human race. I think I just described all of us. And this begs the question, why should I wait? Why bother? Why put up with the pain of waiting? Well, there's three reasons why I think we should wait on God. If you're taking notes, write this down. Number one, we should wait because God waits. 
We should wait because God waits. God has waited longer than any of us. The one person who shouldn't have to wait chooses to. The Bible is full of examples of God waiting on us. God waited for the Israelites to turn back to him time and time again. God waited for the perfect time to send his son to die for our sins. And God waits for us to turn to him and accept his forgiveness. It says this in the Bible, The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. If God can wait on us, we surely can wait on God. Now, the second reason we should wait is this, if you're taking notes. Number two, we should wait because God calls us to. The Bible says, wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. It also says that the Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. God's word calls us to wait and trust in God. The Psalms are full of verses declaring that I will wait on you, Lord. The Bible is full of examples of people waiting and trusting in God. Patience is one of the fruits of the Spirit. To trust and follow God is to wait on God. Have you had to wait on God? Have you had to trust his heart when you can't see his hand? It can be maddening. It can feel unending. And we can become resentful when we start to think about the fact that we don't even need to wait. I mean, think about it. God didn't have to make Abraham and Sarah wait. He's God. It's not like he needed his powers to recharge. What was the point of that? Why did he make them wait? Why does God make us wait? Why can't he be instantaneous? I mean, think about it. Was all that time wasted? Was God just doing nothing during those 25 years? Was God messing with Abraham? Well, this actually brings us to our third reason we should wait. If you're taking notes, number three is this. Waiting is an opportunity to grow in our trust for God. It's an opportunity to grow in our trust for God. When I was in the sixth grade, my parents went through a divorce. And that was extremely hard for me. And I was confused and I was hurt and I was angry. And I was waiting for God to do something about it. I was waiting for God to fix my family. And I waited and I waited and I waited and I kept thinking, God, what are you doing? Why aren't you moving? Why aren't you fixing things? I had these expectations about what God was going to do. And when he didn't do that, I got upset. I felt like God wasn't doing anything. But listen, God wasn't doing nothing during that time. Even though he didn't change my situation, he changed me. In my waiting for God, I felt like he wasn't doing anything. But that was because I was expecting him to come through in the way I wanted him to. So in that time, I learned what it meant to trust God. And so did Abraham and Sarah. God wasn't doing nothing during those 25 years of waiting. God was teaching Abraham and Sarah what it meant to trust in him even when they couldn't see him working. Abraham is known for his faith. And I have to imagine that the way he grew in his faith is by waiting on God, choosing to trust when he couldn't see the results. The Bible says in Hebrews 11, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. To have faith, to trust, means to wait and put our hope in God even when we can't see what he's doing. So view your season of waiting as an opportunity to grow in your trust for God. Your waiting is not wasted. Lean in to God and see the ways that he wants to grow you in your waiting. Okay, so so how should we wait? I mean, practically speaking, what does it mean to wait on God? And what should my attitude be when waiting? Well, as you leave today, I want you to apply this key principle to your life when it comes to waiting. And in fact, it's actually going to serve as our big idea for today. If you're taking notes, write this down. The secret to waiting is this. Wait expectantly, but without expectations. Wait expectantly, but without expectations. Okay, Nathan, you just said the same thing twice. Aren't those the same thing? No, actually, they're not. See, to be expectant means that you know God will move. You trust him. To have expectations means that you want God to move in a specific way on a specific day. We're called to wait expectantly, to know that God will come through, to know that God will move, to trust that God knows what's best for us, to trust that God has a good plan for us. We are not called to wait with expectations, that God will come through in our terms and in our timeline. And this takes a relinquishment of control of how we expect God should operate. 
It means saying, I don't know when it's gonna happen, I don't even know if it's gonna happen, but I'm gonna lay aside my plans and open myself up to God's better plan. James, the brother of Jesus, teaches on this. He says this, Come now, you who say, today or tomorrow, we'll go to such and such a town and spend a year there and trade and make profit, yet you don't even know what tomorrow will bring. What's your life? For you're a mist that appears for a short time and then it vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it's the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. Do you pray like that? Do you say, God, do this or God, do that? Or do you say, God, I'm bringing this before you. Let your will be done. We don't know what our life entails. And by placing expectations on God, we're actually declaring that God exists to serve me. He should do what I want when I want. Instead, we're to have the attitude of, if it's your will, God, I'm expectant, but I'm laying aside my expectations. I'm open to whatever you want. And here's another key for waiting practically. Waiting expectantly does not mean doing nothing. It simply means being open to God's direction and timing. Trusting in God is not an excuse to be lazy. It's not an excuse to be passive or never take action. It just means laying aside our expectations of what God should do or how our lives should go. That when God leads us another way or enters us into a season of waiting, that we don't push against him, that we don't force our agenda. If you expect God to do the things that you want him to, you will be disappointed. In fact, this is the whole reason Jesus was crucified. The Jewish people were waiting for a Messiah to come, but they were waiting with expectations. When Jesus didn't meet their expectations of what a Messiah would do, they crucified him. They were waiting, but they had expectations. And we see this with Jesus' second coming as well. God calls us to wait expectant for Jesus to return, to keep our eyes open, to be alert, to, to be expectant. But even Jesus said, no one will know the day or hour. Jesus didn't even know. It's this idea of being expectant, but not having expectations. So be open to what God will do, whether it fits your preconceived idea of what he should do. Remember, God is not our genie. He doesn't have to do what we ask or operate according to our schedule. We're called to lay down our agenda, to lay down our expectations, and trust in a God who sees the bigger picture and whose timing is best. Abraham didn't know when God would come through on his promise, and it's in those moments that it's easy to doubt God, to doubt if he's even there, to doubt if he even cares. But it's also in those moments that we're called to trust. Trust in God despite the waiting. Trust in God even when we can't see him moving. If you're taking notes, write this down. You can't see how your story ends, so choose to trust the one who can. You can't see how your story ends, so choose to trust the one who can. You may be in a season of waiting. It may feel like it's unending. You may feel like your life will never turn around or that God will never come through. Listen, you have an incredible opportunity right now to learn what it means to trust in God. There's been so many moments in my life where I was struggling, going through things that didn't make sense, waiting for God to show up. And it's in the waiting that our faith grows. It's in the waiting that God changes us. And I can now look back on those moments and see that God wasn't doing nothing. God was changing me despite this unchanging situation. God was keeping me together despite my world falling apart. And it's in those moments that I couldn't see it. I doubted God. I doubted his goodness. And maybe you're in the same spot. Listen, in the moment, you won't be able to see God moving. In the moment, you can't see how your story ends. But God can, and he asks us to trust him to have faith in him. Why? Because he's trustworthy. Now, the most beautiful part of Abraham's story is that God did follow through on his promise to Abraham. He blessed Abraham and Sarah with a son even after they had lost all hope. And it was through this son that the nation of Israel was formed and that the Messiah, our Savior, was born. It was in God's timing and it was in God's way. And God did the unexpected through Jesus. Through his death and resurrection, he took on our sin and debt, and he paid the price, freeing us from the consequence of sin. And now he offers us an opportunity to accept that gift today. And if you've never made a decision to accept that gift of forgiveness, I want to give you an opportunity right now. 
If you're here today and you wanna make a decision to follow Jesus for the first time, I would just simply ask in this moment that you would open your heart up to God and repeat these words after me. You don't have to say them out loud, you can just say them under your breath or in your mind. But say, God, I've messed up, I've sinned, I've turned my own way, and I've done my own thing. I don't deserve your love, I can never earn your love. But today I choose to accept this gift of forgiveness that you offer me. I choose to turn away from my sin, and I choose to follow you. I know I won't be perfect, but I know that I'm a child of God. Thank you for new life. Today I give you mine. And God, for every other person watching, would you help us in our seasons of waiting to trust in you, to realize we don't see the big picture, we can't see how our story ends, so we're gonna choose to trust in the one who can. God, help us to trust you and have faith in whatever season of waiting we're in and be open to your leading and direction in our lives. I pray this all in your name, amen. If you made a decision today to follow Jesus for the first time, congratulations, you made the best decision of your life. My best advice for you is to text the number that's on the screen right now. You can connect with a pastor and that pastor can share with you what your next steps are in your faith. This number is also open for people who need prayer and support or they just like to speak with a pastor. So I'd encourage you to text a pastor right now if you need anything at all. Thank you so much for joining us at Broadway Church Online this week. We'll see you again next Sunday. Thanks so much for joining us at Church Online this week. If you have any prayer needs or requests, please text the number on the screen. Or if you're new to Broadway and you're looking to connect deeper, you can email new at broadwaychurch.com and a pastor will reply and help you get connected to a place where you can best serve and grow. Now, as I mentioned earlier, here are some discussion questions you can use based on today's sermon. What is the hardest thing you had to wait for? What are some other stories in the Bible where people had to wait? What are your struggles to relinquish control to God? What are you needing to do to wait expectantly on God? Have you ever acted out in your impatience with God? We pray that by engaging deeper into today's message, it will help you along in your spiritual walk. Stick around for just a little longer as we transition into a time of communion. Thank you for joining us for our celebration of communion today. Last Sunday of every month at Broadway, we take time to celebrate baptism and communion. And so take a moment, get some juice and a cracker or a piece of bread, and in just a few moments, we'll share the remembrance of Jesus' death together. I had just arrived at the Calgary airport. I was a little bit late that day, and I'd got there just 10 minutes before boarding. And I was looking for something important that was essential to the trip I was about to make, only to find out I did not have it with me. And in a panic, I started thinking about when was the last time I saw that item? And I realized that I had left it at the home of the person to whom I was staying. Well, there was no time for me to go back and pick it up, and it was absolutely essential to what I was gonna do. And I was frantic about it, and so finally I called my host and I said, listen, I, this is a big ask, but is there any chance you could grab this item, jump in the car, drive down, meet me at the airport, there's half an hour before the plane leaves, can you help me? And remarkably, um, they managed to get to the airport with what I needed just at the very last second. And I breathed an incredible sigh of relief. And I thought, wow, just in time, this finally arrived. Have you ever been there? Have you ever had an experience like that? That whole notion of something happening just in time. Well, let me talk some, about something a little more serious than an airplane flight. The reality is we all have a destination and it's called an appointment with God to give an account for the way we've lived our lives. Some of us are ready for that moment, but a lot of us aren't that ready for that moment. And we're sort of wondering, you know, who is going to come through for us? Like who is going to be there to advocate for us when we stand before God? And the good news of the gospel is articulated by Paul in Romans chapter five, when he says this, he says, you see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Now, very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man, somebody might possibly dare to die. 
But God demonstrates his own love towards us in this, that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. At the right time, when we were powerless, when we were lost in our sin, God sent Jesus to die for you and for me. He arrived at just the right time to give us eternal life and peace with God forevermore. Every time we gather around the communion table, we celebrate this reality that God in his wisdom and seeing our need decided to send Jesus who is the answer to that need, the one we were powerless to meet to overcome the downward pressure and the impact of sin on our lives. He sent Jesus to do that work for us. And every communion Sunday, we celebrate that blessed event when Jesus showed up just in time to allow us to stand before God knowing that our sins had been covered and that we have been forgiven. I hope you've taken some time to gather some bread in a cup because we are going to share the remembrance of communion right now. I wanna share with you some thoughts from Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, where he reflects on the meaning of communion and what it is that we are about to share together. And this is what he says. He says, for I received from the Lord what I also passed to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Take the bread or the cracker that you have in your hand and just share it with me as we remember. And then Paul continues. Uh, after the supper, he took the cup and he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us remember Jesus' sacrifice by sharing the cup together. The bread we share represents God's body, Jesus' body broken for us. And the cup we share is the blood of Jesus that covers all of our sin. What a marvelous truth that is, that he takes away our anxiety and gives us confidence and a new relationship with God the Father. Let us pray. Our God and Father, we just thank you for these few moments we've had together to remember the death of your son for our sin. Lord, we were powerless, we were helpless, we were frantic at the airport, as it were. But at the right time, at just the right time, you sent Jesus to lay down his life to pay the penalty. And so, Lord, we just give you thanks and praise today and ask you that you would help us not only to live out of the reality of this truth, but to share it with others. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. God bless you, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Desiree and I am one of the leaders here. And today we have a very special guest with us, someone who is on spring break, one of our preteens. So why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. My name's Olive. Okay, Olive, thank you for being here. And I'm really excited that you're here because I thought today we could set the record straight officially because every single week we talk about who is taller, which is obviously me. No, it's me. Okay, well, let's, let's see. <laughs> let's let the people decide. Okay, uh, Victor, come and come and set the record straight. <laughs> mm, definitely Olive. Yeah. Okay, well I guess we set the record straight. Uh, <laughs> hmm. Well, we have a ton of stuff happening here, Broadway, for you and your families. So let's get into it. City Reach is hiring for two full-time positions. Would you or someone you know be interested to join us as a Food for Families truck driver or as the fundraising and volunteer coordinator? We're looking for qualified and enthusiastic individuals to join our team now. For more info, visit cityreach.org slash job opportunities. Next Sunday night at 6 p.m., we will be starting up our monthly encounter nights. An encounter night is an evening of worship, prayer and interaction with the Holy Spirit. This is an all church event, so please join us on April 3rd at the Vancouver campus. For more information, contact lewisc at broadwaychurch.com. 
Beginning on March 30th, we are offering the Emotionally Healthy Relationship course at our Vancouver campus in room 105 on Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. Come and learn eight skills that will transform the way you love God, yourself, and others. For details, contact Pastor Mick Nelson here at the church. You are invited to a free online class for parents and caregivers entitled Supporting Kids Mental Health, Strategies for Parents and Caregivers, featuring special guest David Miner, social worker, counselor, and coach. It's all happening online Tuesday, April 5th at 8 p.m. Sign up to get the Zoom link at broadwaykids.ca or email Pastor Emily for more details. Do you have questions about life, purpose, and faith? Join Alpha. Alpha is a 10-week interactive series where we explore the most important questions about life, purpose, and faith. There will be an online and on-site option for Alpha, and it begins on March 30th at 6.30 p.m. Find all the details at bway.ca slash alpha. Come worship with us on Good Friday at our Vancouver campus as we reflect on the cross and the sacrifice of our Savior Jesus, happening on Friday, April 15th at 11.15 a.m. Also, He is risen. He is risen indeed. Come celebrate Easter on April 17th at all campuses at our regular service times. Are you grieving the loss of a loved one? Or do you know someone who's recently been bereaved? We are offering a half-day seminar to support you on this journey. We will have video presentations and an opportunity to share in a safe environment. Happening on Saturday, April 9th from 9 a.m. to noon in the Hornby Chapel. For more information, contact Pastor Sheila Thompson. If you missed anything that we said, you can always visit our website, broadwaychurch.com, for more information on all of our ministries and events. And while you're there, make sure to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube.